Right. It is 10 o'clock, um, so I think we will start on time at 10 o'clock, but we are expecting others to join us um, as we go through probably in the next two or three minutes. So hopefully they'll join in my introduction and then they won't miss too much. Um, so good morning, everybody. Really wonderful to have you here with us today. Thank you very much for joining us for our online open day. My name is Alison. Um, I've been working at GWC for eight years. I'm the executive ambassador. Um, so I have the job of building and maintaining our partner networks. Um, it's really good to have you here with us. If you can just turn your cameras on very briefly, just so we can see everybody who's in the room. It's just nice to, to know who's here. And then there we go. Thank you. And then I'm going to ask you to pop your mics onto mute and that will help everybody to get the best reception. Turn off your cameras. Um, and then if you can just type into the chat where you're from, that would be really great so that we can have a, a sense of who's in the room. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, our GWC Open Days used to take place on the campus here in Musenberg in Cape Town. Uh, today we're really encouraged yes. that you're joining us for our 2021 20, online yes. Open Day. John, if I can ask you just to pop yourself on mute. John Manguero, I think we're picking up some... Thank you. <laughs> there will be opportunities later for questions and answers, so <laughs> thank you. Um, Please, yes, type into the chat where you're from. While you're doing that, I just want to encourage you that we have been fully operational during the pandemic. And this year has been even better because we've been able to have face-to-face -face lectures all year so far, which we're really, really thankful for. Uh, the students and faculty particularly have been thankful for that. We're glad that you've set the time aside to be with us for the next hour. What we want to do is to give you a flavor of GWC, of our curriculum, our community, our fellowship, um, and we hope that you enjoy the program. It's going to be a selection of short presentations. Some of them are filmed and some of them are live. During the presentations, you can turn off your cameras and your mic. And at the end of each presentation, we will have a five minute question and answer. So you can type your questions into the chat. And then Nina, Nina, give us a wave. Nina will facilitate a question and answer session at the end of each presentation. We are trying to stick to time. So if we have too many questions to answer, we'll also be here in the room at the end of the event. If you'd like an opportunity to chat a bit further, then we'll be here to answer any further questions. So we know it's a big decision for you to give up your time and your resources to come and study here at GWC as part of your plans for equipping yourself for serving in ministry. The fact you're here today suggests that you're really seriously considering this. Maybe you're thinking full-time, part-time, maybe an undergraduate or postgraduate. If we just have a look in the chat, I can see that we've got here Victoria from Uganda, from Cape Town, we've got Jotham. Where else are people from? Just look in the bottom bar and there's a chat there. If you just wanna type in there where you're attending from, that'd be great. I haven't got any others entering. Okay, we'll come back to that later on. We're going to begin our program with Dr. Mark Dixon. Mark was appointed as the principal in 2013, and before then he was the vice principal at GWC. Mark enjoys grappling with the truths of Christian faith and has a particular interest in science and Christianity. Before being at GWC, he was a senior minister of St. Matthew's Church here in Cape Town for 17 years. He's married to Julie and he's really enjoying being a grandpa. He's going to present live and he's going to answer the question, why should you come here and study at GWC? Thank you, Mark, and over to you. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I'm really pleased that you've joined uh, the Zoom event today. And I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak with you. By way of heading up the presentation this morning, I want to ask a few questions and provide an answer for each of them. So here's the first question. Why would anyone want to study theology? The Apostle Paul wrote to a group of Christians living in the Greek city of Corinth, and this is what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He writes, do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. 
As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours and you are of Christ and Christ is of God. Now let's think about what Paul is saying. Clearly, all of us are more worldly and influenced by the world and the world's mentality than we realize. The Christians who lived in Corinth were proud of what they thought they knew. But these Christian people didn't really understand Christ properly. And so they didn't understand him properly. They didn't understand God properly. If you study theology at GWC, you will study the Bible. And the aim is to get to know God better and walk more closely with him. That's very liberating. These verses that Paul wrote are saying that you don't belong to some church or church tradition or church leader. Instead, it's the other way around. All of it belongs to you because you belong to Christ. So that's the first question. Why would anyone want to study theology? Question number two. You might ask, if I come and study, what is the best program for me? Well, the answer is that we have several programs. We have a one-year program, a three-year program, and a postgraduate program. Firstly, you can enter a one-year certificate program, which is fully accredited. When you hear me say accredited, I'm referring to the South African School on Higher Education. We have vetted and accredited all our programs. Now, this uh, one-year certificate, this is for you if you want an introduction to foundational professional skills in the Christian church or in other areas of life where what is needed are things like reading, writing, and speaking skills, and also critical thinking skills. What can you do with this certificate? Well, given that this program offers a year study at level five, that's our first year university level, the certificate opens a door to a couple of things. It opens a door to the Bachelor of Theology degree here at George Whitfield College, or perhaps at another university, uh, or perhaps even a different degree somewhere else. It also paves the way, this one year study also paves the way for general employment in the economic and social sector, because you'll have a, a fully accredited certificate at uh, first year university level. It offers the possibility of general employment in the economic and social sector where, where transferable skills are valued. And it also opens the door to recognition for the Gospel Worker Certificate with REACH South Africa. Now, REACH South Africa is an evangelical Anglican denomination based in this country, in South Africa. And it also opens the door for work on the mission field. So that's the one-year program. However, number two, you can also enter a three-year degree program, also fully accredited. And this is for you if you want to serve God's kingdom directly through a career, uh, a career of preaching and teaching God's word or work on the mission field. It's suitable for you if you're seeking a first degree with significant transferable skills. People ask, what can you do with this degree? And the answer is, well, it does a couple of things. First of all, a Bachelor of Theology degree opens the door to the ordained ministry of the Word of God in a local church or the mission field. It can also uh, uh, pave the way for you to plant a church and for you to do effective evangelism. Also opens the door to postgraduate studies, either in theology or in a new discipline at another university. And it can also pave the way for positions of leadership in Christian circles and in other areas of life. The transferable skills from this degree are useful in the economic and social sector. It can also open the door to future lecturing or leadership appointments in theological education or tertiary institutions. Uh, what's happening here at this college, George Whitwell College, is theological education. And some people find that this degree is the best path towards opening a door for uh, lecturing. And it also paves the way for, it, uh, for engaging in training of people in Bible knowledge from grassroots to higher levels. So that's number two, uh, the three-year degree program. Number, th 
The third thing, that number three, you should consider postgraduate study if you already have a degree in theology and you want to go further then the postgraduate department is for you. George Whitfield College offers a further degree beyond the Bachelor of Theolo Theology called an honors degree or a BTH honors. And this degree is often completed in one year. And after you've graduated with an honors degree, you can enroll for a master's degree. This usually takes about two years to complete. Beyond that, you can embark on doctoral studies and that might take three or four years. The aim of postgraduate degrees is to narrow the focus of your studies and equip you with specialist knowledge in some area of the Bible or theological knowledge. Uh, for example, you could specialize in Old Testament. Our postgraduate program can train you to become an expert in the Old Testament. And at the same time, postgraduate studies develop your ability to do research. Now at this point, this is question number three. At this point, you might ask me, what are some of the distinctives of GWC training, George Whitfield College training? What are some of the distinctives? You might ask, why should I come and study at GWC and not go on to some other theological college? Another good one. Well, the answer partly is because it is one of the distinctives of GWC is an emphasis on giving students particular tools and skills, one of which is called biblical theology. Not every theological college excels in this skill. If you master biblical theology, you'll be able to understand how the whole Bible fits together. Now, I'm not going to say too much more about that because other speakers are going to highlight that distinctive and others in just a moment. It will be helpful, however, for you to know that GWC has a faculty that specializes in Old Testament or New Testament, Christian doctrine or philosophy, or in some other key area like church history. It's vital for you to study. If you're going to come and study theology, it's vital for you to learn from specialists who've made a life study of the disciplines which every Bible ministry person needs to have in order to work properly with the Bible. So why not come and study for a one-year certificate? Fully accredited, level five, that's the first year of university. But maybe you want to come and study for three years and complete a Bachelor of Theology degree also fully accredited, or come and study for a fully accredited postgraduate degree. May God bless you as you consider these things. I'm going to hand you over now to Steve Rockwell, who's on our George Whitfield College faculty, and he will tell you why we make such a big deal about Greek and Hebrew. Steve heads up our ministry department at GWC. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Why does GWC make such a big deal about studying Greek and Hebrew? Well, that's a great question to ask. And in fact, there's actually a lot of really important answers to that question. Um, but the one I want to focus on with you and the one I want to highlight to you now is actually is actually the same reason why GWC makes a big deal about all of its studies at college. Uh, the main reason why GWC makes such a big deal about Greek and Hebrew is because we want you to get to know God better. And as I said, that's actually the aim of all of our studies at GWC. Everything we do at this college is designed to help you get to know God better, to love him more, uh, to be prepared to serve him and to serve his church uh, better in the future. And the only way to get to know God better is through his word. And God, in his providence, chose to reveal himself to us in and through his word in the Old Testament, through the, written in ancient Hebrew, and in the New Testament, uh, written in the common Greek language of the first century Mediterranean world. God chose to reveal himself to us in Greek and Hebrew. And so if we want to get to know God better, if we want to help you get to know God better, then we want to help you get to know Greek and Hebrew. Now, you might say to me, I've already got my Bible. Maybe it's an English Bible. Maybe it's in another 
first language of yours. I've already got this Bible and it's, and it's helped me throughout my life to grow and to get to know God better. Why do I need to bother with Greek and Hebrew? And to that I say, perfect. I think that's awesome. It, and it, what a great blessing it is to be able to have access to God's word in our own mother tongues. That is such a privilege and something to be really happy about. But there's a difference between reading a translation and reading the original text. And it's not that your translations are wrong or anything like that. They're probably excellent. But even a good translation is a poor substitute for being able to read the Bible, the Word of God, in the original languages. Here at GWC, we like to say that it's a little bit like the difference between an old black and white TV and a brand new ultra high definition 60 inch plasma screen TV. Right? I'm old enough to remember what it was like growing up as a young kid, sitting in front of those big massive box black and white TVs and watching it. Uh, you might not remember that, but you can imagine one of those old boxy TVs uh, putting it next to a brand new ultra high definition TV. And imagine you're watching the same program on those TVs, the same show. Maybe it's a, a game of football, uh, Man U versus Liverpool or something like that. And, and if you watch both of those screens, well, you know, you're going to get the gist of the game. It doesn't matter what screen you watch. You're going to know what team's got possession of the ball. You're going to know when a goal is scored. You're going to get the final result. You're going to know who won. But I think we all understand and we all appreciate that watching it on the big, high definition TV is just so much better an experience. The, the colour, the detail, the intricacy, it's just that much better. And it's a little bit like that when it comes to reading the Bible in the original languages also. There's just so much more that you can get out of it, so much more detail in the grammar, in the rhythm, in the rhyme, in the structure, in the words, in the language. There's so much more that comes out of it uh, when you read the Bible in the original languages. So if you love God and you want to get to know God better, then why not consider coming to GWC and helping us help you to love learning the original languages. Martin Luther, who was the spearhead of the Reformation, once said this famously, As much as we love the gospel, let us zealously pursue the ancient languages. And here at GWC, we love the gospel a lot. And so we have an equal love and zeal for the original languages of Greek and Hebrew. So why not come to GWC and let us teach you how to read the Bible in high definition? It would be my greatest privilege and joy to be able to help you do that for yourself. Well, good morning, everybody. Let me add uh, my welcome to that of Alison and Mark. It is great to have you with us this morning. As Mark said, uh, I wear a few hats at college. I head up the ministry department here, but I also have the great privilege of lecturing Greek to all the students who come to GWC, and that's something that I love and enjoy. Um, I'm going to say hi to Nina. Hey, Nina. As hi, Alison. Everyone. As Alison mentioned earlier, Nina is going to be looking after any questions that you guys have or any questions that might have arised throughout our time. And after each one of these short presentations, there's generally an opportunity to ask questions. So, Nina, have we got any questions? Steve, I've got one question for you. How long are our language modules in the undergraduate degree at GWC? Um, okay, that's a great question. We, we, we studied Greek and Hebrew as a language itself for, for a year, uh, two separate modules uh, over the course of a year. But that's not the end of your studies in the languages. Uh, in fact, we want to study it as a language for the goal of, as I said in that video, reading the Bible, right? Interacting with the original text of the Bible. So after you study Greek for a year in first year at JWC in the bachelor's degree, after that, all the rest of your studies in the New Testament throughout second year and third year, all your New Testament book studies, 
uh, will all be based on the Greek text uh, of, of the Bible and of the, of the book that you're working through. And similarly, uh, you'll study Hebrew in second year as a language to get your uh, head around the language. And then all your uh, Old Testament studies in third year uh, will be based on the Hebrew text, the Old Testament. So we study them as a language itself for a year, but we study them as a language. It's, it's a means to an end. And, and the end is to read the Bible in the original language. And so actually your whole time at JWC will be uh, engrossed in the original languages. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. And do you need to be a good linguist to study Greek and Hebrew? Not at all. Not at all. Um, in fact, I think uh, most people that come to college, uh, I always ask, how many, how many languages do you speak? And, uh, you know, the average, uh, you know, in a first year class, probably three or four different languages. Um, I always tell the class, I only speak one language and I don't even speak that very well, right? Uh, Australian English, not so good. Um, but, but you don't have to be a good linguist. No, you don't. You have to, have to be willing to work. That's all. Um, a, a very famous Greek grammarian by the name of uh, Robinson said once that all you need to do is be willing to put in half an hour a day every day and you'll be a master. That's all you need to do. Half an hour a day every day and you'll be an expert. So no, you don't have to be an expert. Thanks, Stephen. Last question. What is Language Summer School? Ah, so we have, we have summer school. Uh, it runs for uh, a, a week and a half, 10 days uh, at the start of every year eight days actually at the start of every year and what we want to do is we want to really intensively study the languages um, before uh, all of our other subjects all our old testament subjects and biblical theology and church history and systematic theology um, all those other subjects that you'll study when you're here before that comes in and, and clouds up everything we want to really focus the intention on getting the languages uh, under our belts and in our minds as quickly and as and as succinctly as possible and so at the start of every year in first year uh, the, the first year students will have a Greek intensive summer school uh, for, uh, for, for that week and a half. And at the same time, the second years will just focus exclusively on Hebrew for that week and a half. It's a busy week. It's a fun week. Uh, and it's a great week and a great way to start the year by getting the languages uh, as much as possible under your belt. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. And someone just asked who can attend Greek summer school? Uh, well, anyone can attend Greek summer school. It, it is intended for the bachelors to students um, and uh, but we often have the high certificate students uh, sometimes high certificate students have an English stream where they're working on in increasing their English and we have English modules and English courses so if you come to the high certificate uh, course uh, uh, enrolled in the English stream then you'll have an English intensive uh, during summer school but if you enroll for the high certificate and you aren't uh, part of the English stream uh, then the high certificate students are generally welcome to join the bachelor students for the first uh, part of summer school if they like. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Steve. No worries. Now I'm going to hand you back over to Alison, who uh, began our time together here this morning. Uh, Alison has a real live JWC student to talk to you about mm -hmm. so that you can get to know a little bit about what it's like to be here as a student. Thanks, Alison. Thank you, Steve. And a very warm welcome to Jotham. Jotham, are you with us? There we go. Yes, I am. <laughs> Hi, Jotham. Um, Jotham, Jotham is going to share with you today um, some of his experience here at GWC. He's in his first year of his BCH, so he's a great person to hear from. Jotham, can you start by telling us where you're from and why you came to study theology here at GWC? Okay. Um, full name is Jotham Temwani Mwale, and I'm from Lusaka, Zambia. And why I came to study at GWC is um, I come from a culture where um, I guess Bible school is not really seen as, as important. We don't have that many Bible schools. Um, and yeah, I think I found myself in a place where I was answering a lot of questions and being placed in positions of, um, let me say, responsibility or authority. And I thought it would be prudent for me to find myself in a setup where I too learn before I can continue to teach and speak to different people. Thanks, Jotham. Um, I know that you've had a, quite a lot of experience in ministry and in missions before coming to GWC, um, and yet you're feeling that need to be equipped to be able to answer questions and to um, explain the word. Can you tell us which of the courses that you've done so far in this last six months 
have most shaped your understanding um, and how has it actually impact you in your life as a Christian? Okay. Um, firstly, um, almost all <laughs> almost all the courses have something about them, really. Um, coming from a missions background, I would probably be quickly biased towards something like missiology um, because of the sending aspect, the going out, which, like you've mentioned, I've done I've done a bit of. Um, but I will say um, Reverend Pumezo Masango's um, class, um, we're calling it Ministry 1A. I'm not too sure if that's the name I should be using, but yeah, um, it's, it's focus on African ministry and it's focus on things like contextualization and understanding different cultures, different practices in Africa, which is our platform for ministry. I think that has definitely opened up my mind to a whole lot and I've appreciated that one um, probably the most, if anything. Um, another one might be introduction to doctrine. Um, I like how we're able to um, split the different topics. We recently did one on Trinity, and that's a big one because <laughs> I'm not too sure if I've ever been able to properly answer a question on the Trinity. But then when you jump into um, such a subject and actually begin to study it and write an assignment on it, you definitely should be better at approaching such, such a topic afterwards. Yeah. And what about your, your walk with the Lord, Jotham? What about your, your knowledge of Christ, your relationship with Christ? How is that, um, does that change at all as you study the word in detail in this way? It, it definitely does. Um, I think we are all a sum total of our exposure. And if that is true, then what happens is um, we experience um, maybe allow me to put it this way, we experience Christ based on how well we're exposed to him. So when, when, when we begin to get exposed to him at a different level and see certain things more clearly through the word, it definitely has to change something. There's no way you can, you can stay the same after seeing him in a better, better light. And you've been living in our community currently, I think we have 10 um, African nations represented at the college. How are you finding you obviously living here with your wife and a newborn yeah. baby? Um, so not in residence, but in a separate flat section that's for married um, couples. How are you finding living in community? What's your experience been like? Okay. Um, what, what we've heard about community and what we've experienced might be two different things um, because um, unfortunately we've come at a time when we're still battling with this whole COVID pandemic. But so far, so good. Um, I think we've had a great experience of community. Um, the fact that we had baby come in recently as well, I think that's a plus because we got to experience um, community in a way that others might not have. We got a few people coming over, bringing meals and stuff, interacting with them at that level. And extended also, I would say GWC allows you to experience community also through the church you decide to attach yourself to. And I think we've had great community from there as well. So now coming to GWC, we know it does involve a lot of sacrifice. It's a big decision of your time, your finances, changes that you have to make. As people here are considering coming to study here, what advice do you have for them as they're deliberating that decision? Okay, um, I, know, I know it might be a big decision, probably is. Let me not even say might be. Um, it's one year, three years, or however long of your life that you would have to um, shift from wherever you are and come to, um, come to South Africa and study here. But it's not, it's not something you'd, you'd regret. I think any investment you make towards growing in God um, is something that will be with you for life. I believe it's Colossians 1 verse 9, where Paul is saying, I do not cease praying for you that you will grow in the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Um, I believe GWC provides such a platform for you. I know it's a faith move um, and you would have a lot to consider, but all things being equal, you would not regret such a decision and you would be blessed for life if you came to study at GWC. Thank you, Jotham. Really appreciate you spending some time with us today and answering those, um, those questions. And next, we're going to hear from Reverend Ross Anderson. Ross is a full-time faculty member teaching biblical studies, missiology, and preaching at GWC. He'll be answering the question, 
Why study biblical theology? Thank you, Ross. Hello, dear friends. Welcome to our open day, uh, although it's online, of course, but it's good that we can uh, meet in this way. And um, I am here to talk to you about one of the modules we offer called Biblical Theology. Now, one of my great joys at George Whitfield College is that I teach Biblical Theology to higher certificate students and to Bachelor of Theology first year students students. So let me briefly introduce the subject to you with uh, three questions. Number one, what is it? Number two, why is it important? Number three, who is it for? And then I'll close with um, a brief illustration. Well, first of all, what is it? What is biblical theology? It's a technical term referring to a particular theological discipline, namely whole Bible theology. So not New Testament theology, not Old Testament theology, not limited to Pauline theology or um, the theology of Isaiah in the Old Testament. No, biblical theology is a technical term to uh, describe this theological discipline whereby we study the whole Bible as one great story. So it's whole Bible theology. Um, we examine how the whole Bible fits together. We look at the one great overriding story that the Bible is telling. So there are lots of differences. Uh, there's a huge amount of diversity in the Bible, but there's also an underlying unity because there's one author. All scripture is God breathed and inspired by God himself. So. Uh, the link, one way of understanding the link between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and which makes it a whole story, one story, you can't divide them, is, um, is promise and fulfillment. In the Old Testament, you've got many promises that God makes, covenant promises. In the New Testament, they are fulfilled, ultimately, in the person of the Lord Jesus. Secondly, why is it important? Why should I come to GWC and study biblical theology? Well, let me just uh, affirm it is very, very important. It bridges the gap from the Bible written thousands of years ago to the day and age in which we live. Uh, it's linked to hermeneutics. That is the study of interpretation, how we interpret the Bible. What is God saying to me today through the Bible, his ancient word and by his spirit? And the only way you can bridge that gap, the only way you can hear God speaking clearly to you today is to actually use this tool called biblical theology. So it's very, very exciting and very, very important. Thirdly, who is it for? The answer is it's for you. Biblical theology is for you. It's for every single Christian, every disciple of Jesus. It's not just for the university. It's not just for academics or professional theologians or, or what shall we call them, uh, scholars. Uh, biblical theology is a key tool that every Christian should have in their toolbox and know how to use. It will revolutionize your reading of Scripture It'll help you with difficult passages, and um, you will hear God speaking through his word to you today as a result. What is God saying to me today in my context through his word and by his spirit? Biblical theology will help us in that. So number one, what is it? Number two, why is it important? And number three, who is it for? And now finally, as I conclude, uh, let, me, let me try and illustrate uh, an aspect of biblical theology for you. I'm often asked, what is the relationship between systematic theology, which most of us are familiar with, and biblical theology, which as a discipline, most of us are not actually familiar with? So what is the relationship between the two? Well, I want to say that um, 
uh, one way of illustrating it, I mean, this is not strictly true, but this is just an illustration. One way of illustra illustrating it is to say that they are two sides of the same coin. You can't separate them. We need both. And that is why we teach both at George Ritfield College. So here's the illustration. Picture the Bible as a beautiful field full of flowers, and there are different colors, red flowers, orange, blue, pink, yellow, many, many different colors. The flowers are also in different shapes. They have different fragrances. They are different sizes and so on. Now, biblical theology is the study of that whole field. It's a helicopter view. It's a bird's eye view where you can see the whole field. You can see all the colors. You can see all the shapes and all the sizes. And as you look at it, certain patterns and motifs and interconnectedness begins to appear in that huge field. That's biblical theology. Systematic theology looks at the same field, the Bible, but makes a study of all, for example, the red flowers and puts them together and all the yellow flowers and puts them together you see it's it's more specialized if you like it's concerned not so much with the whole field but with particular colors in that beautiful field if you want to know more about biblical theology i don't have time to tell you now but why not join us at george ritfield college next year God bless you. Well, hi, everyone. I hope you found that presentation interesting and uh, helpful. And I hope it has whetted your appetite to come and join us in uh, 2022. As you heard, my name is Ross Anderson. I joined the GWC faculty in the year 2009, although I've done many years of, of visiting lecturing at the college uh, before that. Um, and as Alison mentioned, my responsibilities are biblical studies, not just biblical theology, but biblical studies, missiology, and preaching. I was ordained in the Church of England in South Africa, as it was called then, in 1982, and I've served at a number of churches over the years, most recently 23 years at St. James Church Kenilworth in Cape Town where I succeeded Bishop Frank Retief as rector. Well, after that introduction, uh, Nina, over to you. Are there any questions on biblical theology? Hi, Ross. Yes. Could you tell us how is GWC's emphasis on biblical theology seen throughout its programs? Um, yeah, thanks for that question. Um, first of all, let me affirm it is seen throughout our modules and our programs because a lot of our work is in, bib in biblical studies. Biblical theology is an absolutely critical module because when you are doing Old Testament studies and when you are doing New Testament studies, you will be using the skills of biblical theology to do those studies in the bigger context of the whole Bible. So biblical theology, although it's um, a one semester module in your first year BTH or higher certificate year, uh, it is a discipline that you will use throughout your three years and postgrad studies um, in biblical studies. Thanks, Ross. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Now I'm handing over, sorry, <laughs> I'm handing over to uh, Nikki, who is the director of our children's ministry studies and she is going to present i think on video first is that right nikki thank you hi everyone my name is nikki and i head up the children's ministry stream here at college teaching and serving in children's ministry comes with great responsibility James 3 verse 1 tells us that those who teach will be judged with greater strictness. And so there is a high expectation on those who teach young minds. Now, this might be common knowledge to most of you, that teachers have higher expectations put upon them. But have you ever thought about how there is a more significant impact on teaching children as opposed to adults? I'd like to explain to you why this is so. When a child is born, their brain is plastic. 
This means that the brain is literally ready to absorb any information about the world at any given time and that it continuously reshapes itself as this new information comes in. There is a constant categorizing of information at a much faster pace than adults. This is why a young child can learn multiple languages by the time they are six years old. The child's brain is designed to take in a huge amount of data. And because of this, children are already fast building a worldview as foundations and concepts are being formed in their minds and the child is linking these things together. We should honor this aspect of God's design by teaching the correct biblical worldview from the youngest age possible. Even a two-year-old can be taught that God made them, that God made everything around them, and that God loves them. Teaching children at this young age also means that they will be less likely to defer from a biblical worldview when they are older because the foundations are already there. A child's brain and the way it develops is not the only reason why teaching children is so impactful and more so than adults. Research has shown that most committed lifelong Christians get saved under the age of 18. And of this group, most actually get saved under the age of 14. The same research also shows that these Christian youth and children are most likely to be evangelized by their peers. This means that children are not only our best possible pool of potential converts, but our most effective evangelists as well. And so we need to teach these children biblical truths, foundations, and concepts so that they can have the skills and opportunity to evangelize the other kids. They need to understand how to show the relevance of scripture to the other children and know how to apply the scripture to their own lives. So who does this important task? This task that seems weightier and more impactful than working with adults? Well, we need theologically trained children's ministers and workers to be able to cope with this important task. Studying theology is essential, and then studying how to use that theology and apply it to children, which takes extra skills. For adults, it is easier to package truth. They have years of practice of sitting and listening to and unpacking chunky information. And of course, they have much greater attention spans. With children, it is necessary to be creative and to understand the differences in developmental needs so that we can teach according to those needs. This means learning about children's development, their contexts, their creative learning needs, and of course, what the Bible says about children. Studying the children's ministry high certificate in theology is a good introduction to becoming a children's worker. Or better yet, studying it as well as the bachelor's degree in theology to become a full-time children's minister. You actually need more skills to teach children than the average minister would who teaches adults. I would encourage you to connect with your church or get in partnership with several churches to be able to come here and study and get qualified in children's ministry so you can go back to these churches and serve them in this area. The children in Africa need you, especially those who don't come from Christian homes. I'll leave you with this verse from 2 Timothy 2.13. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Hi everyone, so my name is Nikki, as you saw in the video, and I'm the Director of Children's Ministry Studies. I've been serving on the faculty at college since 2016, and it's really good to be here today, and so welcome to you guys. Uh, are there any questions for us, Nina? Hi Nikki, thanks. Um, as GWC offers a pastoral certificate as well as a children's certificate, could you elaborate on the difference between the two? Yeah, so both of them are a higher certificate in theology, and they're just two different streams. Um, they each have the same sort of core, a core bulk of theology modules, which takes up about half, half of the credits of the certificates. Um, whereas when the children's ministry uh, certificate focuses on specialized practical children's ministry modules, the pastoral stream has a more general uh, collection of uh, ministry modules. 
So basically anything other than children's ministry. So youth ministry, women's work, working with small groups, evangelism, that kind of thing. But they share the same theological core. Great. Thanks, Nikki. That's all. Okay. Thanks, guys. We are now going to have our campus video tour. So enjoy that. I'm Amanda, a third year student at GWC, and I will be taking you on a short tour around the campus. Come with me. Our tour begins at the reception area, seeing as this is where you arrive. Interesting fact, Morris House was the original GWC building, and here you will find the registry team, IT department, and all the support staff, and the all important lecture rooms. Actually, let's go check them out. Our lecture rooms are set out in cinema style, but no popcorn allowed. Your lectures will typically start at 8 a.m. and run to about 1 p.m., which is lunchtime. In some cases, there will be some afternoon lectures. And you'll be very happy to know that Wi-Fi is available for students throughout the campus. Right next door, you'll find the library. And this will be your new best friend. With over 60,000 volumes, everything you need for study or research will be found in this library. Plus, computers are provided for those of you who will need access. Two floors up from the library is the auditorium, which also serves as the chapel and meeting place where we fellowship together twice a week. This is where faculty and guest preachers get to encourage us in the Word. GWC students also get an opportunity to lead services and worship. These are very special times. Ladies, we also meet here for combined fellowship once a term. Downstairs, you have the courtyard, a popular place for group study and coffee in between classes. And if you're lucky, some time in the sun. Right next to is the faculty building where faculty offices are. Here, you will always find a willing faculty member to offer you help and support when needed. Let's go check out the postgraduate study room in Ford House. Postgraduate students, this is where you'll spend most of your time. A brand new study area where you can make yourself at home and study any time of day. This room is accessible to postgraduate students only. Sorry, undergrads. And upstairs, we have our friendly explore team who administrate the correspondence course. But I'm sure all you really want to know is, where will I live? And most importantly, how is the food? There are several accommodation blocks, all within five minutes of each other. There is family accommodation and shared self-catering flats. The main residence and the latest addition is the Hope Metlope Student Center, which was completed in 2018. There are three floors of accommodation, each apartment with a shower and bathroom. And each floor has either a social, study, or recreational space. I'm standing on the ground floor of the Hope Mitlope Student Center in the Student Lounge, which is called the Ecclesia Lounge. You'll soon learn that Ecclesia in Greek means gathering, and so we gather here for socials, studying, and relaxation. There is nearly always someone here to chat to or to bother. As always, saving the best for last our beautiful Dark Steiner. It has views of the ocean and the mountains and it is just breathtaking. Here we eat, have coffee together, study and pray. It is a beautiful space to fellowship and have fun together. All in all, we are greatly blessed with great facilities and a community of people from all over Africa and the world living and studying together. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour and that we will see you soon. I hope you enjoyed that uh, film of the campus. Obviously things are different at the moment. We are very careful at college about distancing, wearing masks, sanitizing, 
Um, our chapel services currently have remained online, and we but we do meet in groups. So some people will watch online, and then small groups will sit and watch chapel together, but distanced as well. So just to reassure you that this was filmed before the pandemic struck last year, and we are very, very careful in the college at the moment, keeping community as best we can, but also being very careful with um, keeping safe and keeping each other safe. So up next, we have a film presentation, um, sorry, by Dr. Nathan Lovell, who's the Director of Research, and he'll be presenting to you on the importance of pursuing a postgraduate qualification. Why would anyone consider postgraduate study in Christian theology? At George Mayfield College, our postgraduate program is about developing and stewarding the intellectual gifts that God gives people for the sake of his church. We're all different, aren't we? The Apostle Paul wrote, uh, wrote in his letter to the Ephesian church about the different sorts of people and gifts and abilities that God gives. He said, Christ himself gave the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. We all bring something different to the body of Christ. For some people, God gives them this amazing ability to think deeply and to discern truth and wrestle and investigate with issues. That's a real gift to the church. But just like someone with musical ability still needs to practice their instrument and still needs the opportunity to develop their gifts, so also someone with intellectual ability still needs to develop that gift as well. And that's what postgraduate studies is really about. It's about being a good steward. At George Whitfield College, we focus on three skills in particular, research, critical thinking, and clear communication. Everyone who enrolls studies different kinds of things. Some people study problems in understanding the Bible. Some people wrestle with theological questions or historical questions, and others investigate ethical or pastoral dilemmas. But no matter what we're studying, it's the skills we're looking to develop, because this is how we can serve the church and build up the body of Christ. People with skills in research are often the ones who can see an issue or a problem and then carefully investigate it and wrestle with it and give it the time that it needs and think judiciously about it from a number of different angles. They weigh up different perspectives, they bring it into conversation with the Christian gospel, and they come to a conclusion, and then help and lead the church's thinking in that area as well. And you know what? The African church needs people like that. We need commentaries and books written by African authors for African Christians. We need public theologians who can respond to issues with justice and mercy and care from an African perspective. We need African leaders and teachers who care about the knowledge of God and who can explain the redemptive power of the gospel in this context. The Apostle Paul goes on to say what happens when people exercise the gifts that God gives them and do it well. He says, then will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and the cunning and craftiness of people. Instead, speaking the truth in love will grow up to become in every respect the mature body of Christ. And that's why you should consider postgraduate study. GWC's postgraduate program is about developing and stewarding the intellectual gifts that God gives to his people for the sake of his church, and that could be you. Hi everyone. Uh, my name's my name's Nathan. I'm still viewing Alison's video screen on my um, on my screen, so that's thrown me a little bit. But um, welcome. Let me add my welcome. It's great to see even some familiar names in the participants list today. Uh, and um, and it's a great joy to be with you. Uh, are there any questions for me, Nina? Thanks, Nathan. Could you elaborate on what GWC's key areas of research are? Yeah, I can do that. So 
at um, at postgraduate level, basically our students study the same kinds of things that they study at undergraduate level, uh, except obviously in a in a chance that uh, it's a chance for them to go deeper into them. Uh, so we still study uh, uh, topics in biblical studies. We've got students this year, for example, studying um, the unity of God's people in John's gospel. We've got people studying things like um, the nature of justice in, in Isaiah. Uh, people do topics in uh, church history. Uh, we've got people studying South African church history this year uh, and also English Reformation. Uh, people do doctrine. Uh, we've, got, um, we've got a student studying the Trinity and the nature of authority in the church uh, and an issue, an issue like that. So it's, it's really the same kinds of topics that we study at undergraduate level. Those are the things that we then go on to pursue at research level as well. Great. And can someone study postgraduate degrees part-time? Yes, you can absolutely study postgraduate degrees part-time. Uh, I think normally that looks a little bit different for everybody. Uh, so that, that kind of thing would require a conversation uh, between you and me. Uh, and you could get in touch with me and we could talk about what that might look like, uh, what that might look like for you and your context. Thanks, Nathan. Okay. Uh, let me pass, pass you on to uh, Pomezo Masango, who teaches church history here at George Whitfield College. Hello, everyone. My name is Pomezo Masango from George Whitfield College. There are many reasons why it is important to study church history and to study African church history in particular. But today I want to share with you only three reasons why it is important for you to study African church history. Reason number one is so that you can know the wondrous works of God in Africa. God has, has worked in and among African peoples for, uh, for a very long time, ever since he created them. He has achieved many things through them. So it is important as a Christian believer to know God by knowing what he has done among the people of the continent of Africa. The second reason is so that you can appreciate your rich family history. God has not called us to himself only, but he has also called us to one another. So as we get to know God, it's important to get to know God's people as well. And what better way of doing that than actually studying the, the history of the past of the African church so that you can know your own family. You can know the cloud of witnesses that have gone before you. You can appreciate and thank God for how he has worked in and among them. The, the third reason why it is important for you to learn African church history is so that you can equip yourself for Christian ministry in the 21st century. There are many challenges that are facing us in Africa in the 21st century. We will be wise to learn from our forebears how they dealt with their challenges in their own time, how they sought to witness to the kingdom of God in their own context. And as we do that, we will be equipped uh, to be able to effectively minister in our own time. So I invite you to come to George Whitfield College and spend a couple of months reflecting on the history of God's wondrous work among the peoples of, Afri among the, peoples of the African continent. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Um, uh, I would like to add my welcome uh, and I'm sure you have been enjoying this day with us. Um, Nina, do we have any questions? Yes, thanks, Pomezo. Um, How many modules are there on church history in the undergraduate degree? Um, there are about five modules in, in church history here at George Woodfield uh, for everybody. Uh, so, for instance, the is a module, if you are doing a certificate, there is a module that is called a Church History Survey. And then in your BTH1, you do early church history. In your BTH2, you do 
Reformation church history. Then in your third year, you do African church history and uh, also modern church history. Um, so there's blend of church history that is being studied here. Thanks for Mezzo. And if you're asked to recommend one book that influenced you the most in the area of African church history, what would it be? Uh, well, I'd like to recommend a book by uh, Stephen Pass. So if you have not read anything on African church history before, I would recommend that you read a book that is uh, titled The Faith Moves South. Um, and the subtitle is a history of the church in Africa. I don't know. Oh, sorry, you can't see it. I have it with me. Um, it's a it's a good book. It's precise. It's only a brief survey. It begins uh, looking at the history of the church from the first century uh, up to the end of the twentieth century, uh, and it's up to date in terms of um, dealing with the with the some of the uh, other materials that, that have been uh, retained on the African church history. So I would recommend that one. Great, thanks, Fumezo. Could we ask you to maybe put the title and author in the chat so that oh, if anyone's interested, they can take sure. it from there? I'll do that. Thank you very much, Nina. Thanks, um, I'm now going to hand you over to uh, Let of Rika Hendricks, who is our registry officer here at George Whitfield College. And she's going to take you through the question of how to apply here at GWC. Thank you. Thank you, Pomezo. And um, good morning, everyone. And once again, thank you for joining our online open day. My name is Ludovica Hendricks, and I'm the registry officer at the college. And one of my main duties is to assist new and current students with the application process. And for the next few uh, minutes, I'll be taking you through a short presentation on how to apply at GWC. Please uh, allow me a few seconds while I share my screen with you. Okay. Just hang on. We can see the screen, Nadov. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. Our application packs are available via the college's website, which is www.gwc.ac.za. And the application packs are available in the following study options. At the undergrad level, we have the one year high certificate in theology program which is offered in both the children's ministry track as well as the general track. And then we have the three years Bachelor of Theology program. And at a postgraduate level, we have the Bachelor of Theology honors program, which is a minimum of one year with an optional extension of six months. And then we also have the two years Masters of Theology program. We also offer support to students um, at a PhD level through the Evangelical Research Fellowship Program. All right, so it's important for you to ensure that you receive and apply for the correct application pack. And when completing the application form to ensure that you tick all the appropriate boxes when needed, to read the instructions carefully in the application pack, and also to proofread your application form to ensure that you have completed all the sections and then to attach all the required documents in the applications before sending it off to the um, application's email address, which is applications at gwc.ac.za. All right, so it's important for students to familiarize themselves with the application deadline. Our final deadline is the 17th of September, 2020. Students also need to note that you cannot submit an incomplete application as it will not be considered for entrance. All right. 
on um, after submitting your application, the faculty board's decision will be given to you at least one month after the application deadline. All right. So on submitting your application form, there is a non-refundable application fee of 350 Rand, which needs to be paid to the college. The banking details and other forms of payment options can be found in the application pack as well as the 2022 fee structure and also to note when making the payment to reference it to reference it, it sorry with your last name and the wording app fee all right so gwc does offer a partial bursary assistance to which students can apply for however students are encouraged to raise their own funds as the college cannot cover all the costs the financial assistance is only awarded to full-time students and students can request to apply for a partial bursary assistance application pack only once they have been accepted into one of our programs. And to also note that there are terms and conditions that you need to read in the application pack. Right. And then um, all queries and questions that you have, you can forward it to the application's email address, where we then will be able to assist you with all your questions. All right. Okay. And then once again, thank you for joining us. And I look forward or we look forward to assisting you with your application process. And next, uh, we have Nina with a few of your questions. Thank you, Dobrika. And can I encourage everyone, if you do have any questions, to quickly pop them in the chat, and I'll happily ask Ludovica what that uh, put the questions to her for you. Um, in the meantime, Ludovica, could you answer the question on whether a student can study part time in the undergraduate programs? Sure. So students are able to apply for certain modules on a part time basis um, during the application part time part-time application process, you are then given a lecture timetable in which you then can view and select your modules and also view our schedule, which is from Mondays to Friday from eight o'clock until half past three. And also to note that we do not offer weekend classes or afternoon classes. And students have the options to apply for, or have the options to apply to, to the modules for credit for degree purposes. In this case, you would then attend the classes, write the exams, and also um, do the assignments. Or you can um, opt to apply to audit the modules, in which then you would uh, attend the classes and don't have to do the assignments or write the exams. Thanks, Adobrika. And can you confirm um, what programs you need to be enrolled in in order to be to be allowed to apply for a partial bursary? Um, well, you need to be a full-time student. You need to be enrolled as a full-time student to apply for a partial bursary assistance. Would that include all our programs? Uh, yes, there will be high certificate, a bachelor of theology, as well as uh, honors and masters. Thanks, Sadabrika. Thank Could you also answer the question on whether it's an option to study online at GWC? Okay, um, well, the primary mode of learning at the college is done by contact mode only. Online learning will only take place if and when the government regulations restricts us from, on, from um, contact lectures um, only due to our current um, COVID-19 pandemic. However, um, GWC is accredited for teaching and learning via contact mode only. Great, thanks, Adavrika. All right, um, is that all the questions? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, everyone, for your questions. And I hand it over to Alison to end off the program. Thanks, Adavrika. And thank you, Nina, for fielding all the questions throughout the time. Uh, we know that this has been a lot of information in a short time. It's a lot to take in and digest, but everything that we've shared with you is available on our website. It's www.gwc.ac.za. I'm sure many of you have been there already. I also encourage you to go to our YouTube channel 
Um, you just go to YouTube and search for George Woodfield College. We've got many, many testimonies from students. There's teaching from faculty, chapel services. You can have a real insight into the college just by having a look through um, the information that's on the YouTube channel. Be assured that we as a college are praying for you as you make this decision. Um, we know that it's hard to make decisions in this current climate. Um, and if you're finding yourself with time on your hands, you might want to consider looking at our Explore Correspondence course as well. Um, it's an eight module correspondence course. You'll also find the details of it on the website, but it's something you could get started with now if you want to, whilst you're making a decision whether or not coming and studying theology is for you. So just an encouragement for you to have a look at that as well. So I'm going to close in prayer and then I'm going to ask everybody to turn their cameras on. And if there's further questions, we are here um, for a time still to help answer any of those questions you might still have. So let's close our eyes. Father God, we know that George Whitfield College, Lord, is your work, Father. It, it is here purely to equip people to understand the Bible better, Father, to know how to teach it better and to preach it better. And Lord, um, it is only possible for all that to happen with people committing their lives, Lord, to study your word and to teaching and preaching and sharing it with others. I pray, Lord, for all those who are here today. I pray for those who are considering whether this is the right direction for them or not. And I ask, Lord, that you please guide them, give them clarity in their thinking, open up doors that need to be opened if it seems there are barriers to them coming. And Father, give them wisdom in their decisions, we pray, and give them all they need if this is the, the decision they decide to follow. So I just pray for your guidance. And we thank you, Lord, that we have a gospel to proclaim because of what your son Jesus did for us on the cross in reconciling us with you. And pray, Lord, that you make each of us here faithful in every opportunity we have to share your word. In Jesus' name, Father. Amen. So if you'd like to pop on your cameras, just. And then if anyone has any further questions, you can also pop your mics on if you want to at this point, and we can um, have real life questions, <laughs> not just ones written in the chat. Anyone got anything they'd like to ask? You can also please feel free if, if you have everything you need, do feel free to, to leave the room if you want to as well. So there's no obligation to stay, but if you'd like to, you're very welcome. Uh, Nina, you've got the chat there. Oh, you Hi. Can Hello. Website in. Yeah. Hi. My name is Victoria. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the open date has been quite insightful. Um, I would say the questions I asked, what I, I had were mostly answered. So thank you so much. Uh, thank for you for attending. Thank you for attending, Victoria. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself maybe? Whereabouts, what's made you attend today? What made you think to come to the open day? Well, um, my fiance is Tambi Derek. Uh, we're getting married in July. Mm, wonderful. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. He is a student currently enrolled at GWC. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we've been discussing this right through his application last year. Um, the whole process, it's, it's something we've been considering and discussing. Um, I am a doctor. I work in one of the hospitals here. Oh, okay. Yes, but um, we've been thinking about ministry and his being involved in ministry has opened my eyes to how much we need it. Um, I don't know how it is in South Africa, but we struggle a lot with so many preachers and teachers. I mean, I think as Jotham said that many times you, you will end up in a position of responsibility and you might find that you're not as equipped as you'd want to be. And these are people who need your help, who need the right information. And you want to be in a position to 
to give it to them as God would want you to what to to share it. So hence my being here. Um, yes, and I I yeah I appreciate. I don't think I have so many more questions right now. Thank you. It's really good to meet you. We were chatting about your wedding the other day. I know he feels bad that you have all the work to do. <laughs> so know that we're thinking of you and praying for you in your preparation. <laughs> yeah. Yes. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you too. <laughs>